very storage intensive generative AI. I, in, and this is where you come into this story, isn't it? Because you uh, have to work closely with NVIDIA if we're going to get the performance we need. Yes, uh, don't we know it? Um, <laughs> we finished on this picture here. I've got a similar picture on the next slide. Here we are. Here's a very sort of example system. You can see the DDM storage. I'm going to talk about the data in the storage. And here's the DDM system and the housed inside one of these super pods. So yeah, I said, don't we know it? We've been working with NVIDIA now for three years on Selene, and they genuinely have been running these very, very large scale production applications. And of course, coming across data challenges, challenges with storage. And then we've been developing essentially fixes or optimizations to those right over that period, very actively, very back and forth, which means the reference architectures you get are really the fruits of real at scale AI at the very larger scales in very tight combination between ourselves and NVIDIA. I want to give the audience a flavor about what it is that DDN's parallel file system is doing to move the data between the containers running on the DGX where the AI applications go and the storage. And Pamal was mentioning one of the key things we're talking about is checkpointing, um, a big problem area. We always think about read, but we don't think about write. And of course, when you checkpoint data from all these systems, we're writing out from the GPUs at very, very high speed. The faster we can do it, the better. So I'm going to give you a flavor about how that data movement works. But for people, because we mentioned it a few times, for people who aren't entirely sure exactly what checkpointing is. Yeah, I have got a slide on it, but um, well, you, you're running this very large model in memory and you're probably training it right and it might yeah. take as Pramil said it might take weeks to to uh to finish and so there's likely that you can have some component failures some network failures some cables broken during that period and so you don't have to go back 20 days to the start of the program every time that happens so what you do is quite regularly a few hours let's say you're going to take all that memory state you're going to dump it into storage Mm -hmm. safe and protected so that if there is a failure you can just restart again there's more than one reason to do this checkpointing but that's one of them to, to protect yourself against hardware failures so here's a, a ddm storage system and here are a number of nvidia dgx systems and actually what they're doing is running containers typically across the gpus and we are also running virtualized servers and storage inside of our storage system and what those lines are linking it are the data paths. Each one of these containers, each one of these AI frameworks can talk to all the storage servers simultaneously. And this picture, I've only drawn one of our storage systems, but you know, at, at NVIDIA with Celine, there's like 48 of these, and we can provide a single seamless namespace, a so one mount point for everything to make it super simple. Um, so inside here, there's a couple of bits of magic happening. Um, firstly, the thing to note is we've got some intelligence running in the DGX. We've got some software right there. And we also optimize on the network. So we're not just a storage system. It's different from NFS-based systems, different from NAS systems. We have intelligence in, in the compute side right next to the applications. So this intelligent client, the main point about a parallel file system, if people sort of want to know anything about parallel file systems, they should remember this, is that the clients know where the data is and they go get it directly. And what that avoids is a big amount of inefficiency. Imagine if you didn't have that, then those clients have to go to a server. Then that server has to go and do another thing and go get the data where it resides. Because our clients are installed on the DJXs, we can basically half the complexity of the system, remove backend networks and improve performance. We also do this very fast networking. We've got a very fast networking layer and you can imagine it's not explicit, but from this picture, handling the networking across all these containers through multiple rails on the DGXs, through big networks to multiple storage systems in an NFS world with traditional IP addresses, that could become a, a bit of a nightmare. We really take all that problem away and because we're managing the network as well. So it's, it's very, very simple to manage those networks and very fast. Then finally, of course, the storage itself is scale out. So you have, I've just drawn one system here. We have many of those systems, but they just form one seamless namespace. So here you see what was called an AI400X2. This is what we've been shipping to all these super pods over the past uh, two years since we upgraded to this uh, latest model. Uh, these numbers are huge. If you go away and compare these numbers to typically, typically things using NFS, then you'll see they're much smaller and the systems are much bigger. Um, 
So typically it's a 10x ratio between what we do with our parallel file systems and more conventional storage systems. So lots of IOPS, lots of throughput, lots of capacity in a 2U. But the result is we now have new systems which really bring down the cost of all flash quite dramatically and allow you to expand these controllers with much more flash to give you a large capacity. And as I say, these models are getting large, the images you're trading on are getting very large. And this is really a new release. We launched this at ISC, but many people in the in the hall might not know about it. But these are, you know, very high density, very fast uh, QLC based storage systems. And you can see now it's got, uh, let's say, six times the number of flash devices in it that we had before with a single unit, and also they're larger. So this is a, an eight petabyte system uh, right there in that picture. And the same ones can be used to support these super product infrastructures, basically effectively lowering the cost of all flash deployments. So I'll conclude there, I'll conclude with this slide. This slide is a little kind of summary slide about the various integration points we've had with NVIDIA over the years around GPU Direct and around integrating with the networking and stuff. But really the point is that I've been trying to make is there's an architectural piece which makes us efficient and there's the full stack integration piece which makes us efficient. And it's all tied into the problems that NVIDIA is seeing whilst running genuine large-scale models.